Hi friends, from our last lesson we have started a discussion on object oriented system analysis in design subject. And in that lesson we saw the introduction of object oriented system analysis and design. And in this lesson we will see why we have to move towards object oriented approach for developing and designing the system. Okay, uh, so now here I have written a few points and with the help of these points we will try to uh, understand why we should use object oriented approach for system development okay so now here the first point is saying higher level of abstraction so abstraction means where we are allowing the users to access only that information which is required by that user no need to provide unwanted information to the user which the user doesn't require to access okay so that is what the first point is saying now the second point is seamless transitions between various phases of software development Okay. So this uh, object oriented approach is capable enough to move between various activities or the phases of software development. Okay. So as we guys already know that softwares are developed based on various activities. We have to follow a few activities or phases for developing the software. Okay. Suppose if anything goes wrong during any of the phases. In the middle of the phase, suppose I am on the uh, phase of development and now I am writing down the code for the product. Okay, And at that time, I started realizing or the functionalities which I am writing in this development phase is not as per the requirement of the client. Then we can think that there might be some problem in the design phase which we are following to write the code. I think there might be some problem in that phase. So what we can do is we can quickly move back to the design phase. Once we figure it out the problems, then we can fix those problems in the design phase and then we can come back to the development phase to resume the work. Okay. So like this object oriented approach is so much capable or efficient that the developers can easily move between one phase to another phase. If something goes wrong in the middle of any of the phase, we can quickly roll back, we can quickly move to the earlier phase and we can start it fixing those errors. But that is not possible in the traditional approach. The way how we used to make transition between one phase to another phase in the case of object oriented approach, we cannot do that kind of transitions between traditional approach okay so the traditional approach is not flexible it is quite rigid the environment of the traditional approach of development is itself so difficult and complex and difficult to maintain search and update so it will become difficult for the developers to move between one phase to another phase quickly move between one phase one phase to another phase and quickly make changes in the code okay because the environment is not that kind where we can quickly make the changes okay so in the case of object oriented programming we have everything organized okay so the coding uh, approach okay the style of uh, organizing the code in object oriented approach is good okay we can easily organize we can easily find files we can easily find the code and we can easily fix the errors in the case of object oriented programming but whereas in the case of traditional approach it will be difficult to maintain update and search okay so that's why it's not possible to uh, seamlessly make a transition between one phase to another phase in the case of traditional approach of system development okay so here you can see requires complex transitions to move between phases Okay, so whenever we are, we are developing any software, there will be some complex transitions taking place between one phase to another phase. Since the traditional approach is not that much capable enough to handle the transitions between one phase to another phase, as a result of that, it slows down the project. It slows down the behavior of the software and at the end, we will start getting errors. Okay, so I'm sure what is the problem in the case of traditional approach. Okay, and in the case of traditional approach, how we used to write the program is there will be more and more repetitive code. Okay, and there will be 
using extensive use of go to and switch okay which we uh, avoid in the case of object oriented approach okay so this use of uh, repetitive code use of extensive go to and switch statements makes the tra uh, traditional approach not that much capable enough okay, so now the next thing is encouragement of good programming technique okay so this object oriented approach allows the programmer to uh, adopt good programming techniques okay and what are those good programming techniques like comments and documentation okay so this object oriented approach allows us to put the comments whenever we want okay and uh, make a proper documentation of all the functionalities so what is the need of having comments so that other programmers can easily understand our code okay after a few days uh, if you also want to read your code that comment and documents will help you to better understand the code or other colleagues as well or your other friends who have joined in the team they can easily come to know about the functionality which you have written just by reading the comments as well as reading the documents okay so this object oriented approach encourages us to use comments and documentation while writing the code okay uh, next consistent indentation okay so is a consistent indentation in the sense indentation means uh, aligning the code in such a way that it can be easy to read it can be easy to understand okay uh, so uh, aligning or positioning the various lines after the curly brackets okay so that you will come to know just by looking at the code where your if condition has started and where that if condition has ended where your for statement has started and where that for statements has completed and inside that for and if block how much code you have written okay so you can easily come to know and you can easily read the code okay and that is one of the important habit which object oriented programming approach provides you okay so next one is code grouping okay so we can easily group the code in terms of uh, files and in terms of folders okay and then next we have dry principle do not repeat yourself okay so that is one of the important uh, advantage of object oriented approach that we should not write the code which we have already written okay so instead of just writing the same code again and again we can directly reuse the code which we have already completed okay so that is what the principle of dry do not repeat yourself okay now the next one is avoid deep nesting okay so while writing the program and during the development you always have to avoid using more and more if and more and more for loop in your program okay so whenever you keep on nesting for constructs whenever you keep on nesting your if constructs your program will become difficult to read your program will become difficult to maintain as well okay so that thing you need to take care at the time of writing the programs at the time of development that you should avoid deep nesting you should not have more and more and more if inside if for inside for okay so that one thing you need to take care uh, now the next uh, encouragement which object oriented approach provides us is limit number of lines okay yes uh, this here you can see do not repeat yourself principle see with this principle we are not repeating the work which we have already written so directly you can see we are limiting the number of lines we are reducing the number of lines in the program by just taking the functionality which we have already completed uh, now the last advantage i can say is promotion of reusability okay so this object oriented approach promotes reusability okay where you just have to write the code once and whenever you feel that you need to use the same kind of functionality in other module instead of writing the same code again and again you can just reuse the same module in another place 
okay or you can use just uh, or you can make use the same functionality in other place okay uh, so these are some of the reasons why you need to use object oriented approach okay? uh, so now here are object as you guys already know that object is something which exists in real world okay an object is something which has its appearance and it has these properties an object has their own identity an object will have a state an object can have the behavior okay an identity is something which makes that object different from any other object okay so uh, we have many objects okay a mobile phone is an object pen is an object book is an another object okay so all these objects are different to each other and an object can have state as well okay if we talk in terms of programming the values which variables or the data members hold those values can be called as a state okay so uh, and in terms of an object uh, you have an electric bulb okay so the state of an electric bulb can be either on or off okay so that object can have the state as on and off and that is uh, one of the property of object next one is behavior okay so all the objects will have the behaviors okay if we talk in terms of uh, humans okay uh, we have various behavior like we people can talk walk okay run we can write okay uh, we can perform various types of activities and all these comes under the behavior of humans okay uh, an object can have all these properties identity state and behavior okay and now we will discuss about class okay so a class is a template which depicts all these things inside it okay so a class will provide you a place where you can demonstrate various properties of an object so this class will give you a way where you can explain everything about the object okay you can explain about the identity of an object with the help of class you can explain the state behavior and all the uh, properties attributes of this object inside the class okay so class can be called it as a blueprint of an object a class can also be called it as a template for an object because inside the class we will be demonstrating everything in the object and a class contains information like a class can contain data members a class can member functions class can contain access specifiers and check creation as well okay uh, so these data members like uh, variables which we used to declare inside the class which will hold the values okay and member functions are uh, we can also call them as methods and we use these member functions to perform actions on the data members okay and uh, uh, access specifiers so a class can hold various type of data okay a class can hold private data public data and protected data okay based on the permission allowed by the user the data can be kept inside public protected and private access specifiers so those three public protected and private are the access specifiers which we also use inside the class okay and we have object creation okay uh, so inside once we clear once we declare the class then we have to create the object of that class and with that object we can easily access the data members of that class with the help of the member function and now we will just uh, discuss about the structure of a class okay how we can declare a class okay so here you can see i have created a class with the name is emp and it's an employee class and uh, inside employee class i have taken two access specifiers private and public access specifier inside the private access specifier i have written the data members okay so these two are the access specifiers private public and these are the data members which you can see i have written here okay so these are the data members which will be holding the data of that employee okay and inside the public access specifier i have kept two functions get data and process data 
okay so you can notice here i have kept the data and the data is important okay we cannot allow any unauthorized user to access the data so that's why i have kept this data inside the private access specifier so that this private data can be accessed only within this class no other class can have access to this private data so now if anything inside the class wants to access these important details these data members those are these member functions only member functions can have the rights to access these data members and that too with the help of an object when an object of this class gets created and with the help of those object uh, when programmer makes a call to these member functions and then these member functions can access this data members okay so here too much of security is been applied in object oriented approach okay first of all you cannot even directly access these data members because they have kept inside the private access specifier if anything can access these data members or these functions okay Okay, so once the class declaration gets completed here, then uh, I have created a main function and you can see I have created three objects of the employee class, object one, object two, object three. Now I can easily make a call object one dot get data. Okay, so I can easily make a call to the get data and process data functions of this class inside the main function using the object of this class okay so this is how we can create a class and we can declare the attributes properties functions of that class okay so this is everything about object oriented programming okay so this is how we used to write programs using object oriented approach okay so uh, this is uh, what everything about object and classes Okay, so I hope you guys have understood. So now that's all for this lesson and we will see you guys in my next lesson where we will be discussing any other topic of this subject. Okay, and uh, thanks for watching.